I want to say hello to everybody and uh, to say that it's a pleasure and honor for us in Mr. Watch to discuss today with Jean-Claude Biver. He was always in our stories, always in our articles, and it's useless to say today that he is behind so many interesting stories and brands that we today love and look upon to. And uh, I was happy to, to put the title Picture of Love because I always say that, I mean, when it's about you and watches, you always get into the way of love. And I will start directly because I've been following some articles and uh, interviews of yours and you were discussed telling about the first Basel when you slept into a van. Camping bus. Uh, yes, camping yes. bus. And um, I want you to tell us a few words about your way since you were sleeping in a van outside Basel World until today when you are the man behind an entire success story. I know you don't like to, <laughs> to tell like this but it's true I mean and uh, people like me need uh, this need characters to look upon to, to get inspiration so please I s uh, okay thank you very much for having me thank you for the the cover and thank you for this fantastic uh, Romanian wine I told we about uh, with friends about the Romanian wine and I'm now very anxious to uh, try and to open this bottle uh, maybe tonight and uh, I will keep you informed about uh, what I think about it Yes, um, you know, my wife has been, my uh, life has been dictated by passion. I'm a very privileged man because I have a passion, and my passion is watches. But I am also privileged, not that I have a passion for watches, but that I could work daily in my passion. Many people have a passion, but they can only work, they can only go to their passion Sundays or on Saturdays because the rest of the week they have to work. I work in my passion which means I don't work and I never have the impression I work. I never have the impression I need holidays because as I don't work why would I need holidays? Uh, and that's the big advantage if your passion and your job is one. Boom. Uh, it's the same with your ethics. If you have a very pure ethic in your life, private life, um, then, and in business, if you have the same, then wow, you are one. And it's always important to be one. It's important if you have a wife and yourself, you must be one. It's the same with the family. The family must be one. And we are always stronger if we are together. <laughs> so all my life has been dictated since I, am a, I was a hippie in 19, from 1967 to 72. Uh, that was our belief. That was how we would see life. And now I'm 71 years old, so it's quite some time. <laughs> that, but during all my life, I have been able to maintain more or less my philosophy. And if I can give only one recommendation to people, please try to have a passion, number one. Try to work in your passion. And in your life, you must have a very strict uh, ethical behavior. You must share, very important. You must forgive mistakes, because who are we if we don't make mistakes? We can only learn through mistakes. And. Um, Number three, you must respect. And if you share, if you respect, then what can happen? Then you are in the, in the direction of love, and love, that's the real equilibrium of life. And that's the most important thing you need, is love. That's why the Beatles have done the, 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 the song, all you need is love. Exactly, I mean, for me, you are the preacher of love for watches. But how is love getting inside a business where you need to deliver results? How would you define the relation between love and business? It's, the, it's, it's, the, it's only, it's one, it's the same. You know, to get something, you must first give, and then you get back. In love, it's the same, you must first give, and it comes back. Love is not one-sided, you must give, 
and then you get back. But you must start to give. And in business, it's the same. If you behave with your customers, they will give it back to you. If you behave with your employees, they will give it back to you. If you don't behave, and if you chase money, and you chase success, you will fail. You cannot chase money, or you cannot chase success. It comes because of your behavior. It comes back. So don't chase it. Give it. Go. And then love will come back. And that's how I behave with my people. That's why I have the same people. Not all, but uh, one person has joined me in 1979. Another one in 82. Another one in 86. And the youngest came in 93. So all these people have been with me 20, 40 years. <laughs> that, and that's, that's a sign. It's because I behave and they give it back. So the chasing money, the chasing success is the wrong attitude. It will come. It's like if you chase luck. You cannot chase luck. You, you will find it. The way you work, the more you work, the more you behave, the more you will meet luck. But if you don't move, and if you wait, luck cannot come to you. And it's the same with success. Now, I mean, still with, with the love story, but the idea is that how is family and career get along? I mean, always you see these managers that are hunting success and say, no, I have to sacrifice family, but you look like a complete person. What would be the secret? Yes, the, the, you cannot sacrifice uh, one element in order to succeed another one. That's not fair. Uh, you must find a way to integrate everybody. I found it in 19... Uh, it was 82? 82, yes. I found it because I said, let's work when nobody in the family needs me. When do my children, my wife, when do they not need me? They don't need me when they sleep. Because when they sleep, they don't know if I'm there, if I'm not there, they sleep. So let's work when they sleep. And when they're awake, let's go back. So I started to go to my business at five o'clock in the morning and then at four o'clock in the morning and finally at three o'clock in the morning but from three to seven that's four hours they don't need me they they never said oh papa you were not at home between three o'clock and seven o'clock no but because i had these four hours before i could come back home very early some days at four o'clock in the afternoon I was at home. But if you start at three o'clock in the morning, it's normal that at four, that's 13 hours later, you are at home. If you start at five in the morning and you go back at five to your home, at five o'clock you are at home and children just come back from school. So you come back from work, they come back from school. So they don't have the impression Papa is not there. They say, oh, Papa, every, every evening I see him every day. So you must just organize. But many people don't want to do this effort. They say, oh, no, no, I don't want to get up at 3 o'clock. I don't want to get up at 4. Okay, then, then somebody will suffer. So you must regulate the equilibrium. Going to the Swiss industry, the watches. You have seen ups and downs for the Swiss watches. Do you think the smartwatch killed the Swiss quartz? And do you think that the affordable mechanical Swiss watch will be the future? How would you comment? You know, the, the smartwatch uh, is a big opportunity for Swiss traditional watchmaking art. Because <laughs> the smartwatch is teaching people to wear a watch. And it's always easier to sell a watch to somebody when he has already worn a watch. To sell a luxury or an expensive mechanical watch to somebody that never in his life has worn a watch, 
it's not easy because people say, why should I wear a watch? But if, thanks to the smartwatches, many people are wearing it, they get used to wear something on the wrist. Now, people will also notice that when they wear a smartwatch, that after a certain numbers of years, the smartwatch gets obsolete. And then they might realize that the mechanical watch is never obsolete and that the mechanical watch is not the computer on your wrist. And there are some time in your life where you don't want the computer on your wrist, where you want a piece of art, a piece of beauty, a piece of design, a piece of exclusivity, a piece of quality, uh, a piece that has a soul, a piece that uh, has love. And then you discover mechanical watches. So the at the end of the day, the smartwatch and the mechanical watch are complementary. They are not competing. Eventually, the smartwatch is helping people to get used to wear a watch and to prepare people to the next step, which is the mechanical watch. So I don't see competition, I see complementary. You said many times that crisis means opportunity. Now, in my point of view, the big four brands seem to take all the benefits. Where do you see the opportunity? Uh, big and strong brands in crisis are getting out of the crisis by becoming stronger. Weak brands are coming out of the crisis by being even weaker or by disappearing. That's, that's life. <laughs> It's like the virus. The virus was first went to people who already were old or a little bit sick and it killed them. But the virus didn't kill many young uh, people. So uh, it's the same in, the, in business. Weak companies will suffer from crisis and strong companies will take advantage and become stronger. Now, there is another thing in, in a crisis. Every crisis has opportunities. Every crisis has somewhere hidden opportunities. And it's the duty of the, the entrepreneur, of the boss, to find where are these opportunities in the crisis. And then he has to find them. And then he has to connect to them. And then he has to exploit them. That's that's the real responsibility we have. It's not to sit in the crisis and to cry. It's not to be passive in the crisis. It's to be active and to find where are the opportunities. So if you just pint out a few things, I mean, your vision about the future in Swiss watches. I mean, as a trend. It's, it's bigger than ever, you know, because I believe in, in uh, 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 Smart watches in Switzerland will be difficult because it's not our job. We are not producing computers. We are not in the telecom business in Switzerland. We are in the pharma, we are in the machine industry, we are in the finance industry, and we are in the watch industry. But in the communication industry, or computer industry, or chips industry, that's more Silicon Valley, that's more uh, uh, Korea, that's more uh, China, that's more Japan. So it's not our business and the smartwatch is a computer, it's a copy of this watch, of this uh, uh, phone, just smaller and you put it on the wrist. So that's not where we have our strengths. So our strength is to be the contrary, the opposite of this. This becomes obsolete, this needs every day to be uh, uh, charged. Uh, and we are in another side. We are in the tradition, we are in luxury, we are in the soul, we are in beauty. And those two elements can go together. They don't fight. And how can they fight? This will become obsolete. This will become eternal. Eternity has no competition. Who competes God? Nobody. Who competes eternity? Nobody. 
So the smartwatch cannot compete our eternal uh, uh, watch. But they can live together. And why can I not wear on one wrist my computer and on the other wrist my watch? Both can, can exist. So I see big chances today for the Swiss watch industry in the upper segment, in the segment where heritage, tradition, beauty, exclusivity, uh, soul are existing. And you said initially that watches are your passion and the secret of your success, one of them, but which are other passions of Jean Claude? My I heard something about cars. I have passion for people. I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about nature. I'm passionate about animals. I'm passionate about trees. Uh, I'm passionate about water. I'm passionate about wine. I'm passionate as a, as a human being. I am passionate for anything that is in this nature. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I'm passionate also for cheese. I'm passionate for food. I'm passionate for traveling. I, I, I'm pa I, maybe I become passionate about uh, 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 Romanian wine. For me, passion has no limit. Passion is everywhere. And eventually, I am passion. And uh, uh, because I, I, I love life, I'm passionate about life. Life is, uh, life is beautiful. And planet Earth is beautiful. And people are beautiful. And trees are beautiful. And the sea is beautiful. So, passion is my global view, and passion is probably my religion. Uh, one more question. Thank you again for your time. Uh, the definition of Mr. Watch is the magazine about time well spent. What would be your, about, about your vision about time well spent? Time well spent is respect. Any, all the time you can spend in order to show respect, or to behave with respect, is well spent. Time is well spent uh, in education. If you educate people, if you educate kids, that time is extremely well spent. Time is also well spent uh, in love, if you love people. Time is difficult to be better spent than uh, act of love. So uh, I would say time well spent at the end, I put it here, is love. Thank you so much. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.